We are continuing to follow breaking news out of Moscow, where Russian media is reporting dozens of people are dead and more than 100 are injured following a mass shooting and fire at a concert hall. According to Russian media, several gunmen in military fatigues burst into Crocus City Hall and began shooting at the crowd. Russian media also says the suspects threw explosives, which caused the building to catch fire. Reports say visitors are being evacuated, but some may be trapped by that fire. Now, this incident is being called an apparent terror attack. I want to bring in Beth Noble now. She is a professor at Fordham University, also a former Moscow bureau chief uh, for CBS News. Uh, professor, thanks very much for being with us. First of all, uh, I'm wondering if you are hearing anything at all from your contacts in Moscow. So uh, I haven't heard anyone. I think everybody I know at Moscow is either there or... Um, stuck to social media to try to figure out what's going on. Um, not all the Russian channels are even reporting about this yet. There's a sort of a Russian um, version of, uh, of an old news channel, and they have it. But some of the, the major networks have stayed with their entertainment programming. But that mm. said, Russians are all over social media right now. And the social media channels uh, on Telegram in particular, but also on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, um, are all over the news. And, and there's lots of first-hand accounts out there and, and quite a lot of disturbing video. Well, as we await more sort of official details, uh, I'm wondering if you can give us a sense of the context here. This is coming uh, on the heels of Vladimir Putin's re-election. Uh, tell us more about that. Well, um, people are calling what happened over the weekend a, a pseudo election or a rubber stamp election. It wasn't much of an election, uh, but Vladimir Putin did run for an unprecedented fifth term as Russian president and win with about 87 percent of the vote. And so um, he not only held a press conference right afterwards to kind of, uh, you know, bask in the glory, he had a big concert on Red Square just a couple of nights ago um, to celebrate uh, the victory and, and celebrate uh, the, the taking of Crimea 10 years ago. So something like this happening the same week as this election is a terrible blow to Putin's image um, that he uh, has restored law and order to Russia. Now, of course, we have no idea who's behind this attack. Um, already, Ukrainians are saying it wasn't us. We mm. didn't do this. But I think it's uh, very possible that uh, the Ukrainians could be blamed for this, and it could be used as an, escal uh, an excuse to escalate the war. Uh, so, Beth, you were the bureau chief, as we said, in Moscow for CBS News from 1999 to 2006. And during that time, specifically in 2002, there was an attack at a Moscow theater that you covered. And I wonder, it is very early yet. We are still very much uh, in the process of gathering information and details on what happened in this latest attack. But from what we've heard so far, Beth, are you seeing any potential parallels or does that bring to mind any echoes of what you covered back in 2002? Well, certainly, Elaine, I've been thinking very much about that attack at the Moscow Theater. Um, it's called the Nord Ost attack, which was the name of the Russian musical that was playing at the time. And in that attack, about 30 heavily armed Chechens rushed into the theater and took the entire audience and anybody else in that building hostage. But in that case, they were held for three days. Um, a few of the children re were released, but most of the people weren't. And so on the third night, the Russians pumped a narcotic gas into the theater, knocking everybody out, including the hostage takers, who were then either or allegedly were killed. Um, and then people were rescued. So one of the things I think we see here is that the Russians have learned from that. Do not let these things go in. Send in the police quickly and try to get as many people as you can out of there. So certainly the way this is playing out is very different. There's a fire at this Crocus City Hall, which was not the case in Moscow. But I think both of these incidents um, just show that there's no way that you can keep a city of uh, about 9 million people safe. Um, and that as much as the Russians would like to uh, show that uh, everything in Russia is dandy. Um, it's not. And there's a lot of opposition to Putin. Um, uh, there's a lot of opposition to the war in Ukraine. We don't always hear about it, but it's certainly there. And so uh, coming when it does the week of the election is uh, kind of a black eye to Vladimir Putin. 
Um, but of course, you know, my thoughts today are, are with the victims of this attack and, and other terrorist attacks in Russia. The, the, we covered not only the one um, in Moscow in 2002, but one that was even worse in 2004 when an entire school was taken, um, many children and their parents celebrating the first day of school. And Beth, um, I wanted to ask you about sort of that sense of how common or uncommon events like this are. Uh, you know, unfortunately, as you know, here in the United States, um, mass shootings have become a very sad reality uh, and a, a somewhat regular occurrence. But in Russia, this kind of attack or shooting, how common of an event is that? Oh, it's nowhere near as common as in the United States. Um, there are far fewer guns in Russia uh, floating around. Uh, there are some school shootings, but it's very occasional. It's usually a small scale when it does happen. So I don't remember anything like this happening in Russia since the Beslan school siege, which is the one where they took the school uh, in 2004. Um, and obviously that theater raid in Moscow in 2002. Um, and one of the things that Vladimir Putin said to people as part of his uh, re-election campaign is, is, look, I'm a guy who brought peace to Russia. I maintain law and order. Um, but clearly it's, it's impossible to keep a country um, safe all the time, I guess anywhere in the world now, but certainly in Russia, where there are a lot of people who are against President Putin and, and certainly against this war in Ukraine. Beth, you mentioned at the top that uh, there is uh, quite a bit of uh, sort of information or at least some details on social media, but that for the most part, there's not really a lot of official kind of reporting uh, on this within Russia. I'm wondering if you would expect to hear from Vladimir Putin at all on uh, what has happened here. It's obviously very early. Things are developing even as we speak. We see the large police presence there, even as the activity there continues. Uh, but based on your knowledge of covering uh, Russia, um, as we said, you, you know, you were stationed in Moscow for a number of years. Vladimir Putin is someone who, as you well know, uh, looks to the past very much for lessons in how to move forward and uh, very much has clung to power in a way that um, has outlasted several U.S. administrations, frankly. And um, I wonder what you think his sort of public-facing reaction might be in a moment like this, where, as you say, uh, this is certainly a blow to whatever sense of safety and security he may have been trying to project. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question, Lelaine. I, I suspect that he will give a nationwide address about this, but not now. It's it's a fluid situation. There may still be, be people in that concert hall. Uh, I would imagine it, it may come tomorrow once it's all clear. And I think he will probably say to whoever is responsible, um, we know who you are and we are going to hold you responsible and there will be consequences for this. Um, and that's why it's going to be so interesting to see who the perpetrators were of this and what they're able to find out about them, the, the Russian authorities. Um, you know, will it be Ukrainians? Will it be people from the opposition? Um, could it be some kind of a false flag operation? Um, could it be some kind of separatists or Chechens or other people who are not happy with um, the way they're being treated in Russia? Could it be someone from Wagner who was not happy about the death of their leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, in a plane crash that uh, everyone seems to believe, myself included, was orchestrated by the Kremlin? At this point, we just don't know. Um, all we know is that, you know, um, Clearly, gunmen went in to a peaceful concert hall uh, with their guns blazing. Um, but President Putin almost has to say something because everybody in the country is looking to him for leadership, particularly at a, at a time of tragedy like this. All right, a still developing situation uh, in Russia. Beth Noble, professor at Fordham University, former Moscow bureau chief for CBS News. Thank you so much for sharing your insight with us.